But there was a problem. The scientists expected the distribution of emitted light to continue to the increase at wavelengths toward the ultraviolet end of the distribution. It didn't. Instead, there was less and less light given off as they were further and further into the ultraviolet. This was called the ultraviolet catastrophe. But it wasn't a catastrophe at all. It was the beginning of something remarkable. A truly great scientist named Max Planck soon figured out a way to explain the observation. He concluded that the energy contained in the standing waves inside the kiln did not and could not possess just any and all different amounts of energy. Instead, the quantity of energy these standing waves possess had to be limited to a few specific discrete values of energy for each color. A standing wave of blue light, for example, can have energy equal to zero electron volts or three electron volts or six electron volts or nine electron volts and so on. In general, energy equals any whole number n times Planck's constant h times the frequency of light nu which for blue light is any number times three electron volts. But notice, blue light standing waves cannot contain energy equal to one electron volt, or two electron volts, or four electron volts. Realizing that energy could have only discrete values was the beginning of quantum mechanics. The energy is said to be quantized, and n, from the equation above, is called a quantum number. Planck's conclusion that light energy is quantized was quickly used by Einstein to explain another puzzling phenomenon. It was known that shining a light upon a metal plate can release electrons from the plate. But the light has to have a certain wavelength before a single electron is released. We can shine brighter and brighter light on the plate forever. But if the color isn't right, the electrons stay home. Einstein concluded that the light striking the plate had to be coming in discrete bundles and unless a single bundle had enough energy to free an electron from its captivity, it would remain trapped. And as Planck has suggested, the wavelength and frequency of the light was a measure of the amount of energy each bundle carried. So while blue light packets might be able to free an electron, red light packets could not, no matter how many red packets hit the plate. But wait a minute. That sounds awfully like light is a particle and not a wave. And there are mountains of data showing light behaving like a wave. Diffraction, refraction, interference, which is it, a particle or a wave? It is both. These light packets are extremely tiny. Let's call them photons, from photos, the Greek word for light. And when you try to explain the behavior of things this small, you must resort to really unusual ideas. The ideas contained in quantum mechanics. <laughs>